Okay, we're back, SiliconAngle.tv Productions, SiliconAngle.com has got all the coverage in tech. Come there, watch, and get all the stories, the most important stories, most important trends, and what's going to happen in the future. But we are here inside theCUBE, live in New York City, where Hadoop World 2011 is just exploding in, in, in capacity, sold out, the fire marshals downstairs watching Cloudera like a hawk because you know they're over capacity, the demand is outrageous. Hadoop has grown up from open source to main, purely mainstream, venture capitalists announcing a $100 million fund about big data applications. Mike Olson, the CEO of Cloudera, talked about uh, this new generational opportunity, applications changing society, and uh, Cloudera is the company leading the charge. And uh, it's just an amazing, amazing new, new opportunity. And we're here with Kirk Dunn, the COO of Cloudera. I'm here with my co-host, Dave Vellante. Kirk, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, how do you feel? I mean, you're new to Cloudera. The folks who don't know might not know. You came from Cloudera uh, this year, building out the entire presence for bringing the solution from, Mike said, speeds and feeds, it's growing source, to actually yeah. going out and deploying. So you got to feel pretty good that you made a good choice to join so. Cloudera, yeah, I right? So. I mean, what made you uh, want to come work at Cloudera? And, and again, just a little backdrop, then we'll jump into the conversation. Yeah, so it's interesting. I think uh, there's, uh, there's been a couple trends over the last five or 10 years in two main areas, one in storage, uh, more and more people are keeping more and more data every year, and that's kind of obvious. We know that's continuing to grow. The other thing is you've seen uh, a lot of uh, innovation in relational database technology, enterprise data warehousing technology over the years. Faster databases, columnar databases, streaming databases, parallelization of databases, and it's this notion that we need to take all the raw data that we're possessing in our storage systems and expand our ability to prosecute it. So it is really kind of a, a very natural next step to have, a, have Hadoop be a complementary element to exactly that problem. The numbers are off the charts. We heard eBay this morning talking about uh, nine petabytes of information under yeah. management. And I said, wow, that's, I tweeted, that's, yeah. that's big. That is big. And then JP Morgan Chase came up on stage and talked about 50 petabytes. Uh, yeah. That's like mind boggling. Yeah. Um, what are you seeing in the customer base? I mean, it's just uh, amazing growth year yeah. after year after year. I mean, what's happening over well, there? Well, it's phenomenal. I mean, I, if you look at, I mean, the indication of like Hadoop World 1 was 400, last year was 800, this year was 1,450 with 250 people waiting to get in. And I think that's also the trend we see in the market. A, a good uh, indicator was in the mid 2000s, right around 2006, the average Fortune 500 uh, ran about 350 terabytes of data total in their entire infrastructure. Uh, we have a, uh, a customer, a uh, mobile service provider that is generating 350 terabytes of log data every single day. So six years later, the same amount of information that for, an average Fortune 500 had in their entire infrastructure is being generated every single day and doubling every nine months. And it has to do with you know, smartphones and application downloads and all those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, the machine generated data of today is just going to continue and expand. And the issue, like anything, is if you have access to that data, you're going to want to prosecute it because it'll make you smarter about your products, your customers, and your markets. Last year when we were here, uh, was our first Cube, was the second Hadoop world, and you know, I was, uh, we were you know, sharing space with Cloudera, and so I got first-hand view of the geeks and all the PhDs working yeah. on the code. Um, but we, you know, we coined the term "big data revolution," and we were kind of pumping that up. And we felt we felt the energy, and we were yeah. drinking the Kool Aid. Um, so last year, we talked about um, the proof of concepts and how EMC was coming into the market. Yeah. At that point, Green Plum was just you know it's just Green Plum, not the yeah. EMC approach. And the conversation was about proof of concepts. Yeah. So kind of you started to see that first wave of you know real business, not yeah. just the web companies um, coming in. Yeah. So take us through what's happening now. So that happened. And we're hearing people, other vendors in the marketplace saying, oh, Cloudera is the leader, yes, but you know, proof of concepts are small. And so there's been conversations like that. So yeah. share with us, a lot's happened. What's yep. going on with, with the things that you're seeing in the field around legitimate size of deployments? You guys have a lot of reference accounts that you we know you can't talk about. So right. I mean, there's some stuff on the website, but you yeah. guys have a lot of the big deals. So yeah. talk about that. Well, it's interesting. I mean, we like to focus on the customers that we call our data-driven enterprises. 
And so those are the folks that, uh, you know, data is their business. So it's not necessarily the largest companies, it's those companies where they make decisions every day based on data. So if you go back, you know, a couple years ago when CDH, which is Cloudera's distribution for Hadoop, which is a 100% Apache based, basically it's a software integration to make Hadoop more consumable and easy to use. What that did is it set off a, a chain of events where you could easily start to use Hadoop. So when you talk about a proof of concept, migrating to real deployments and where we are today, we're going into environments getting real deployments to occur uh, for people that have been using CDH for more than nine months. So by the time they come to Cloudera, they've already run that proof of concept themselves and they're saying, we're now ready to deploy. A uh, good example, we had a, a, a media company that uh, a senior executive in their IT organization kind of looked through his organization and he saw that he had four 20 to 40 node CDH clusters running in his organization, all independently. Figured it all out, came to us and said, you know what, I want one 200 node cluster. Because again, Hadoop is about aggregating the data, not segmenting the data, not like RDBMS environments where you actually have stove pipes of data. It's put it all in one container and run your analysis against the whole thing. So those are exactly what we're seeing, and they're, you're right, the deployments are quite large. So I interviewed um, last month SAP's president of North America, yeah. and we were talking about analytics. This SAP is just totally on yeah. all analytics, HANA, yeah. and you know, and they got a great vision there, and they're really yeah. doing well. And I said to him, I said, you know, you're in sales, you know, you got out in the field, and you're marketing to these big customers who have real businesses that they're running. I go, what do you say to the ROI skeptics? There's always the guys out yeah. there, hey, you know, where's the ROI? And he said, quote, you know, some, you know, what we're seeing in the marketplace today is that sometimes you don't even have that conversation because the benefits are so great, yeah. it's just a no-brainer. So yeah. can you share with us some use cases where you said, you know, it's not even an ROI discussion, the benefits are so oh, obvious. It's so ridiculous, I mean, it really is. I mean, it, I call it the intelligence test. So you ask me, how do I feel about being here? I passed the intelligence test, right? <laughs> I figured it out. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank <laughs> you. But by the, by the way, by the, the, way the, cube is the, here too. the bar yeah. on that is pretty low, I have yeah. to tell you. If, you. if you don't get Hadoop now, yeah. you don't get it. Yeah, go check into a mental so, institution. Yeah. There's a couple a uh, couple points I would make about that. Uh, one, uh, we have a, a large retail customer, which we can't talk about uh, for obvious reasons, and they their and their regular analytic uh, window is about three years because of the volume and velocity of data coming at them now. They had to shrink it to 18 months so that they could prosecute the information and provide information back to their stores and their supply chain and their inventory control systems and whatnot. They came to us, they said, for no other reason than expanding our window back to three years so that we have broader visibility of our business, we want to deploy Hadoop. So all the other kind of analytical you know, things we could do with them, it's simply just to expand the window to get because of the amount of data they're prosecuting. So that's number one. Um, one of the other ones is there's a uh, customer, uh, it's, a, it's a merchant credit customer, and you can imagine you walk into their environment, they have you know, thousands of, mer of merchants and they have uh, tens and thousands of, of columns. So you can imagine a schema-based world where they're prosecuting data in a database environment. They're using 10% of their available data. So we go in and we say, all right, so your merchants aren't going to change much year over year. You're going to have some more merchants. You know, Organically, you'll grow. But your data columns, the things you're analyzing those merchants against, how about instead of 10,000, how about 100,000? How about a million? And how about instead of analyzing 10% of the data, how about analyzing 100% of the data? And when you say that, the, their mind just explodes because nowhere before they've been able to prosecute that level of data completely. And this is really what uh, deploying on is Hadoop the allows is the, is you to do. the challenge do. for you guys, obviously you got $40 million in new funding, congratulations. That's going to be some yeah, nice uh, funding for you to expand. And you've yep. been expanding um, in your team, solution architects, and you go out there. Yep. I mean, you're out there evangelizing, but you're also kind of you know, educating and kind of you know, feeding everyone kind of yeah. the Kool-Aid, if you will. Um, what, what is that requirement? How are you guys going to how are you guys going to scale it up? Because there's a lot of belly to belly, as Dave says, sales that yeah. you need to go out and do the, the work. Yeah. How are you guys going to scale the, out the uh, the solutions team, and how do you bring that to market? Is it channel play? Is it we saw yeah. the SGI news? What's yep. the today. how are you going to spend that money, and what's the plan? Yeah. So it's a great question. So the two areas we're going to spend it is the, obviously the Hadoop ecosystem is expanding, and so technical development, both on the open source side that we will contribute back to the Apache Hadoop Foundation projects, as well as uh, our proprietary offerings that we will continue to build, will expand that team dramatically. Uh, we've got a lot of relationships with you know, uh, companies like MicroStrategy Informatica 
NetApp, et cetera. And we will continue to invest technical resources in developing those solution sets as well. The other area is, uh, and I can tell you three or four months ago, we were thinking about expanding to Europe and to Asia, kind of wondering, you know, gee, should we do that? We would float a training class out there because Cloudera has trained thousands of people. If you want to get trained on Hadoop, you come to Cloudera. And literally the classes would be filled up in about four or five days. So we realized that there is a huge there demand. is a huge demand for education out there as well as to expand the sales opportunities out in that market. And so we're going to do that. We're going to continue to do that as well. I got to ask the marketing question, John. So, you know, like John said, you got this new war chest. Yeah. You, know, you guys have not taken off the gloves in the marketing. <laughs> and I'm, I want to know sort of what the philosophy is. We were at EMC World in uh, yeah. in May. Yeah. EMC basically shot across the bow. And, oh yeah. And, and we were there, the only ones talking about it. Yeah. Um, you guys were cool about it, and then yeah. Wartonworks comes out, tries to claim they're more open. Yeah. And you know, other than a few blog posts going back and forth, yeah. you really haven't, you know, put out the big guns in marketing. Is that on purpose? Is that your philosophy? What are your thoughts on that? Talk about that a little bit. We don't need to. <laughs> in every single category across the across the categories, we're number one. And so, that, so that's point number one. Point number two would be, this isn't about getting a big piece of a small pie. This is about making the pie bigger. So the fact that other vendors are going to come into the market, have solutions that are going to maybe compete, maybe not compete. We'll, we'll, we'll compete every day with every, anybody that wants to. But we actually think that the market is a big, big opportunity. And there will be many multi-billion dollar companies made deploying Hadoop and Hadoop related solutions. Uh, so we were talking at dinner last night about Cloudera. You know at the Carnegie Deli, um, right here. <laughs> Great and, spot. And, uh, you know, we were really talking about you guys being number one, and we're talking yeah. about Hortonworks and everyone else are throwing grenades at you guys, trying to slow you down. Sure. Um, which seems to be the tactic. Uh, sure. And Mark Hopkins, our editor at SiliconANGLE, was, was talking, he brought up Google. And we talked about, like, this interesting metaphor. Cloudera is the Google of Hadoop, in the yeah. sense that Google's strategy as a number one search provider wasn't to, to increase their share. They were already number one. They had to grow the people on the internet. Yeah. So their whole strategy was to grow this. That, that's what you're saying. That's exactly so it. So why even look back in the mirror, just yeah. continue to expand your lead. Yeah. So you're, that's what you're saying yeah. is your strategy. Matter of fact, if you look at, uh, look at what we've done, we started the business you know, with the original founders helping data-driven enterprises deploy Hadoop three years ago. We built a training organization to make people smart. It's the old feed a man a fish or teach a man a fish. So we're, we are making people smart on Hadoop. We built CDH as an easy way to consume and deploy Hadoop, and we are also built an ecosystem par of partnerships you know, that, that are, is continuing to expand to make that whole thing bigger. So you're right, we're not worried about you know, uh, our position in the market. What we're worried about and focused on is expanding the opportunities for people, enterprises to use and deploy and profit from their data, and that is a key thing. They've got it, it's in there. Matter of fact, the announcement with NetApp, one of the key messages there is NetApp for the last 15 years has stored you know, exabytes of data for very large data-driven companies. How about now they go back and prosecute that data that they never were able to get at before? How about they now are able to prosecute new workloads that are coming up machine-generated kinds of activities? I mean, it just completely turns the whole data analysis I mean, market on its head. The Google of, uh, and that's a good strategy, by the way, I think it's the right one. Um, yeah. But you got to admit, I mean, Cloudera was untouched for years, right? Yeah. So, but there is more competition. Yeah. So how does that affect you guys? I mean, keeps you yeah. on your toes? I mean, well, it's, you're, you're, you it's know, a I mean, great question. What I do mean, you and Mike talk about in the conference rooms when, yeah. you, when you have these conversations? Well, listen, I mean, uh, you know, validating a market is important. And listen, there's some large companies that are saying this is an important market they're going to they're gonna participate in, and we respect that and uh, we take nothing for granted. Listen, this company has worked very hard three years getting to this position. We understand that uh, there's people that are aiming for our position. We have no intention of letting up at all. Matter of fact, we expect we're gonna, with this funding and with our strategic partnerships, we expect to extend the poll position uh, in this coming year going forward. So, so just to give you guys a quick plug here on theCUBE, we're watching SiliconANGLE.TV's uh, productions of theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out to the top events, talk to the smartest people we can find, extract the signal from the noise, and share the top stories, top trends, and, and kind of predict the future. Uh, before we start predicting the future, just give a little <laughs> plug about, you guys are obviously hiring like crazy. Yep. What is the kind of people you're looking for at Cloudera? I mean, obviously you mentioned you want to go out, continue to lead. Yeah. It's a lot of different theaters in your business. You've yeah. got the open source community, uh -huh. yep. you have to go on solution architects, and on the sales side, and marketing yeah. side, so we'll just give a quick uh, well, plug on that. So that's a great that's a great question. As a matter of fact, one of the things we talk about, and this is my personal definition of a disruptive uh, technology, is when you actually can't hire the person, you actually have to make them. So if you can go out and hire the people, then that means that there's a technology that's out there and you're just extending that. 
the fact of the matter is like relational databases like relational databases <laughs> like, like anything like that exactly yeah. if you can go yeah. hire that person then it is not disruptive the definition is is that we are both training the industry so that's where we're at a unique position where we're not only training other people to be able to use Hadoop, we're bringing people in that come out of the storage business. They come out of relational database. They come from different areas of software and we're blending their skills with the ability to know and to know how to deploy and build Hadoop. And that's a unique professional that you can't hire. Matter of fact, go look at Go look at any of the uh, job sites where you, the, the Hadoop engineers or Hadoop salespeople or Hadoop systems engineers are out there. It's a hot spot. So how does that affect kind of what you sell? Can you talk about what you're selling today, where you're generating business today, and how that will likely change over time as you're able to invent those, those roles? Yeah, no, it's a good one. So yeah, as I talked a little bit about the early days was about building a consulting practice and training, and then CDH was your ability to deploy and consume Hadoop. What became very clear, uh, and why we deployed Cloudera Enterprise, was once you have a 20 node cluster and you're running it, and you want to run it into production, you need the management interfaces to be able to understand what's going on in that cluster. What jobs are being run, how the resources are being allocated. The best analogy is, Cloudera Enterprise is to CDH what vCenter at VMware is to the virtual server. So one of the one of the key holy grails to virtualization certainly was a virtual server. Fabulous invention by Diane Green and her company in the early days. But what became really critical as you deployed virtualization more broadly, how do you manage it? How do you manage hundreds or thousands of these virtual machines running in your infrastructure? Hadoop's the same thing. A 20 node cluster goes to a 200 node cluster probably in six months. Because again, it's the, it's the law of statistics. The bigger the sample size, the better the result. Once that occurs, you've got to be able to manage it. You have to know how to resource allocate that cluster and how to run it. So those are the, that, that's where we see our opportunity is in that whole uh, evolution towards using more and more of Cloudera Enterprise features. And that's a subscription model, is that right? It's a subscription model. So with that, you get the proprietary Cloudera bits that run, that, that run on top of uh, CDH, as well as a eight to five or 24 by seven uh, support model. One of the things that's always talked about in the tech business, and I see you're a veteran, you've, you've seen many business cycles, is the ecosystem. And it, yeah. It's almost becoming cliche, but it's really important for, for new opportunities you said are, that are disruptive. Yeah. You guys are obviously building an ecosystem. Mike showed that chart on the keynote. Um, for an ecosystem, there are some critical successes factors you got to kind of nail. Yeah. One, you got to make people money. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, and then also in some of the businesses, either distribution or support, yeah. what are your key success factors for an ecosystem to be successful? So vis-a-vis -vis what's coming in with competitive approaches, et cetera. So the way we look at it, it, it's about you. And when we say it's about you, it's about the customer. And so to the degree that we, with partnerships on this ecosystem, can allow our customers to not just prosecute 10% of their data, but 50 or 100% of their data, so they get greater insight, they can learn more about their customers and markets and generate profit from that, that's what it's about. And so we're very focused on that. Um, you know, you look at the complementary nature of Hadoop in traditional re relational database environments, one of the things that's fascinating is the more we deploy and the more our customers deploy Hadoop, they're finding new workloads that were never possible. So they're getting insight on their business and their customers that yesterday, before they used it, they yeah. couldn't get. So on the go-to-market side specifically, you have just announced a deal with SGI, we cover that, it's kind of a channel, tier one kind of being built out. Yeah. But there's other demand, from tier two and tier, I call tier yeah. three kind of distributors. Yeah. Distributors are integrators is the whole thing yeah. there. And then also you got the direct sales. Yeah. What's that mix going to look like? And, so and how does that affect Actually support? the most recent announcement was yesterday we announced a strategic partnership with uh, Network Appliance. Yeah. And NetApp. We have Jeff Smith who's going to probably come on right after you yeah. squeeze him in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Jeff O'Neill actually, there he Jeff is right there, yeah. So anyway, um, that's a significant relationship with us and our, and our model is, it's really important in the early days that uh, we drive our message into the market, but what's important is we drive it into the market with significant partnerships like NetApp uh, and others. And so we, you will continue to see us work hand in glove with those relationships because again, the solution set, when you start talking about uh, a data-driven enterprise's data, whether it's JP Morgan's or eBay's, there's no one vendor that dominates that. Matter of fact, it's a collective uh, that makes it work. And so we realize that there's there's nothing new here. We got to work together, and so we were very, very focused on those uh, those interactions. We had Tom Georgian, CEO of NetApp, on the Cube yeah. at, at VMworld. He's been on a couple times, and we asked him, what, you know, what's your secret sauce? How yeah. do you continue to do so well and outpace the balance of the industry? And one of the things he pointed to was their channel. Yeah, seventy-five percent of the NetApp business goes through the channel. Yeah, that's right. Um, and that's gonna, that brings me back. You know me. I love to talk about competition. So when we were in uh, at, <laughs> at Strata recently. One of your competitors, who I won't name, actually I will name. Um, it was it was somebody at Greenplum said. 
you know, we, ra we between our raise and, and the revenue that we generated, yeah. we created $200 million of revenue, and Cloudera's raised 30. They're never gonna be able to fund this thing. And I thought about that for a while. Just let me think about that. The ecosystem is the difference, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you know? it is. And then, so you're, you're leveraging companies like NetApp um, yeah. to really gain that yeah. advantage, aren't well, you? Well, and by the way, I mean, we're happy that other companies are, are raising the awareness. Yeah. And like you talked about earlier about competing, great. Start a game, we'll compete. Come on, you guys must be Start like, come on, bring it on. Right? That's exactly <laughs> it, right? I mean, you raise the opportunity, I guarantee you, uh, we're going to get a call. And we'll get the call, they'll raise the opportunity, we'll get a call, and when we compete, we generally... Yeah. Well, you have product to sell. We have, we have pro you know, we've had product, credit, yeah. So. And we've got the, 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 the most demanding customers. And you, listen, with a company like Greenplum, I mean, Hadoop is not their heritage. Enterprise data warehousing is their heritage. Nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, we we work very well with those solutions. We right. actually Hadoop complements those solutions. Yeah, we haven't heard the term Hadoop washing yet, but it's it's getting there. I think next year at the Cube <laughs> we'll hear Hadoop washing. Yeah. You, you, st you slap on Hadoop to everything. Yeah. Uh, my question for you is um, two things. My final question is two two points. Yeah. Every company has one thing in their DNA that they do really really well. Yeah. You know, it could be we ship code on time, or you know, we make a great product. What's the one thing that you can say Cloudera is just elite at? And two, what do you see for next year? Yeah, so the one thing, and it, you're going to see a trend in this, and I will, I will it's a, it, Mike talked about it in his keynote, which is the data science. And so, it, is it really about the container? Is it really about the DBA? Is it really about structured or unstructured data? Is it schemas or schemaless? No, it's about the science behind the data. And we have more people in our building that understand the value and how to extract value out of enterprise data. So it really is about that. Now, how you apply Hadoop to that, that's the next step. But you really have to understand the problem you're trying to solve, which is, you know, you got you have a you have a customer that's got retail data and they've got Twitter feeds and how do you blend all that to make sense of then, you know, that's a signal to noise issue. So you're going to start to see in the coming years, data scientists reporting directly to CEOs of large Fortune 500 companies. Because really it is about how do they prosecute the, inf the amount and volume of information coming into them. And that's the one area where Cloudera is second so, to none. So we, you know, everyone knows the term cloud washing, which is you slap yeah. cloud on an old old product yeah. and it's called cloud washing. Yeah. You know, yeah. we are keeping an eye out at Silicon Valley yeah. Bond for Hadoop washing, where people just slap on Hadoop. Well, I think that's so, it. So what should we look for? I mean, tell us in your words, uh, and uh, we just were joined by Jeff uh, O'Neill from NetApp, we'll get to him in a second, but like, uh, what should we look for? What is cloud, hey, that's cloud washing. What is cloud, I mean, well, uh, Hadoop I think, washing? Uh, I think what you should, look, I, for? I think what you should, look, should look for is the um, distinction of the workloads that are being run in Hadoop. Okay, so you know, some folks would say, well, it's not relational database technology. You know what, it's not intended to, to take over those workloads, it's intended to complement them. So the issue is, you know, like recommendation engines or uh, those kinds of applications are going to become more and more prevalent uh, across the board. And so I think you're going to see net new workloads that are going to get much more mainstream than you've seen today. Right, and so that's the area where I would I would you, keep my eye open. You know, John, I think it's going to be I actually. <laughs> you're, you're, you're always bring this stuff up. It's great. The, you, the big day, the the uh, Hadoop washing. I think it's going to be hard to Hadoop wash because, like, NetApp today packages CDH in with the product. I mean, it's, you're going to find the workloads yeah, that fit. To, but big data yeah. washing is going to happen. Well, it already I mean, is well, happening. Well, the thing is, well, Hadoop, well, big data wash. That's uh, that's like Web 2.0. It's, but it's nice easier term. to big data wash. Is what no, I'm but saying. I mean, like, yeah. but there are some technical questions. Like, you know, Mike showed Hadoop Core, and he showed like you, the evolution of all the different new elements, Hive, Pig, etc., Uzi, yep. and then you got Mahout now out there. So all cool new codes coming in. Yep. So what is Hadoop? I mean, Hadoop yep. is now becoming a little bit more. Well, that's Global. that's the point, though. I mean, the the workloads that I'm talking about is what I would call taking Hadoop from a technology discussion to an applied discussion. Yeah. So, how is Hadoop being applied in a retail bank, in a retail store, in an oil and gas company, in a media company, in a in a gaming internet gaming company? Yeah. How is actually it being applied, and what are the workloads that are transferable across yeah. industries? And that's those are the things you're going to see as Hadoop applied going forward. So we kept a, a good slot of time for you, 30 minutes uh, yeah. when we had a 15 minute segments, we wanted to get some partners in and, and yeah. Jeff O'Neill's with NetApp, who uh, your your team has been on theCUBE. Welcome to theCUBE, uh, <laughs> we're sliding right in. Thanks Mark yeah. for that. Uh, we've had Tom Georgens on, we've had uh, you guys on a lot. Um, so talk about your announcement and with you guys. What did you guys uh, talk about today? I mean, hey, great. Good morning, Kirk. Good to see you. Good to see you, <laughs> yeah. See you Jeff. 
So uh, we actually had two big announcements. The first is that we are going to market with Cloudera and putting Cloudera distribution into, um, with a reseller agreement, into uh, uh, the second piece of this is a, an open solution for Hadoop. So it's an NetApp open solution for Hadoop is what we call it. And there's a few key elements to that, right? So the very first thing that is that is completely open, is completely uh, consistent with the, uh, the Apache Foundation approach. We have, have maintained a lot of freedom. You can choose your database, you can choose your servers, but we're, we're taking a look at the storage component of that and, and approaching it in a new way. There's lots of room for innovation in this ecosystem right now, and we've brought a, a, a taking a look at it, maintaining all the things that are true about Hadoop, so the, the shared nothing infrastructure, and bringing uh, something new to the storage component. So just to be clear, so you're packaging CDH in yes, with... Yes, we are. Um, or Cloudera Enterprise. Or Cloudera okay. Enterprise. Or Cloudera Enterprise. Or, Cloudera, yes. okay. yeah. in, in or both. Both or both? either well, or? Well, CDH is our, dist is, is our, our software it's, integration yeah. of Apache Hadoop yeah. right. code, which you can download for free. Right, and so today. it's the management console well, what the, on top of that. And, and what NetApp is service. selling is Cloudera Enterprise, which is the management suite as well yeah, as... And, and the subscription support. is bundled into that. That's correct. correct. Okay, yeah. got it. And so you are deploying what I would call an, an appliance. I don't know if I can use that term. You didn't use it in your in your press release, no, but we, it's everything I need to plug in and get ready and I can drop that in and, and, and put a Hadoop, Hadoop instance up, stand it up and running. Is that true or not? I'm just going to parse that just a little Please, bit finally because okay. it's important. So to, to, for us to think of it as an appliance, it would also include the the server and the, the so network it does component. Not. We have a reference architecture for that. Okay, we can right. tell you what to do, but it does not include that. Okay, so it doesn't include the servers. You can go out and your resellers you can, pick, can pick the servers, and they're going to do right. some integration. Lots of right. customers. So they're happy. Have, they got some value yeah, to add there. Exactly. exactly. Okay, now you, that's everybody gets a piece yeah, of pie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you know, this you, is were, a big happy you were at VMware, yeah. right? So you know the. Right, for every, no, I wasn't at VMware, but no, Ed was there. Oh, that's right, Ed Albanese yeah. was there. But you know, every dollar spent yeah. on VMware licenses, what, a 15 or 17 Well, that was the John's ecosystem. point earlier, right? And that's like, a key how message. Does everybody right? make money. Right, exactly. Yeah, so right, right. now I, I got to ask you about the open. So you, 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 I think you answered right. part of that, right? You said that it's basically you can use whatever databases you want. So it's, a, it's an interesting choice of terminology in the naming. Of the product, right? But right. You know, now, what's open? Yeah, you know, what is open? Uh, you're not obviously Apache is the open piece, but you're not like open sourcing on tap or anything, are you? No, 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 okay. no. It's it's open in the term that, that it is. is. <laughs> we're just looking for the big big news here. No, we're not. We're not just. We're we're avoiding going any any proprietary way. We're like Cloudera. We we stay close to the the Apache Foundation approach. Okay, so okay. we're we're in, we're enabling the ecosystem. So we're providing what we do well. Your ecosystem with. The Cloudera code on your solution. Yeah, right. That's basically what it is. So and reselling it. Cloudera to your customers through right. So, so you've got you've got all of the NetApp sales for us and through our as well as through our channels. And, and is yeah. it is it on tap underneath or is it is it uh, Ingenio? There's or? a there's a small piece of on tap and there's also Ingenio. Okay. There's a so two pieces. There's a <laughs> there's a name node issue of, of a single point of failure that's well understood in the marketplace and. And ONTAP is the way to solve that with a, okay, an NFS so, hookup. So the Columbo question, okay, go ahead, sorry. The other half of it, and where the, the volume is, is on, a, on an E-Series box. So we put an E-Series box behind, behind the compute nodes uh, to provide a, a new wrinkle on, on how to how to pro provide the storage. Okay, so now that we understand what it is, the, the, yeah. real, the real important business questions are, why does anybody need this? What, what problems is it, is it solving? Okay, the, the first, there's, about th there's three really. One is, think about it, is if you've got compute and storage um, inside the same box, that ratio is fixed. Compute really is driven by applications and, and how many compute nodes you need. Storage is driven by how much data is coming at your, your applications. So what we've done is allowed to, to tune that and separate it so you can keep your, your, your cluster better tuned against uh, these. Uh, you got two levers instead of one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and well, then, so even in Hadoop workloads, and this is where you had a question earlier about what are we going to see in this coming year, um, there are workloads that are compute intensive, which require a lot of cores and a lot of processing, and there's others that are more storage intensive. And so what Jeff's talking about is this kind of, you know, flexibility between compute intensive workloads and storage intensive workloads. So it's it's an interesting solution, a very interesting and novel approach. And the other interesting thing that Kirk said was he stored exabytes of data for all these you know commercial customers yeah. for all these right. years. So this is an incremental opportunity for you. Can you talk about Absolutely. that a little bit? Yeah. 
It, well, it absolutely is. It's, it's, it's brand new, but it's, it's also kind of in our wheelhouse, too, if you will. Um, and, you know, we're a network storage company. We understand this market really well. The, by branching out into Duke, we're just, we're just moving. I don't know. To me, it's very simple. We're just moving to the next, uh, the next pew over in the, in the data center. You know, Ask me something else. No, so, so, okay, so, <laughs> so, so you're good, man. He's so, like, bring it on. Okay. So, so, <laughs> I'm like, NetApp. So, what's the, so talk so about the selling motion. So basically, you're going into existing accounts saying, hey, you've got this big data problem. We can help. Um, talk about that a little we bit. We have customers coming to us. So U.S. public sector. Yeah, we're, we're very big in the U.S. public sector. You've got customers that have a huge, uh, well, they have two things. They have a huge velocity of data that's coming at them, and they also have a huge volume of data. And they're looking for, for approaches where they can get rapid ingest, and then they're, how do you manage that data? So with the solution we put together with Cloudera, we've actually, um, that's one example of a kind of workload that, that we've got unique capability. The, uh, the E-Series box that we put behind this mm -hmm. is a, a data gobbling machine. So, <laughs> Pac-Man. So my question yeah. for so since you and it's great questions, for since you want some questions, yeah. I'll bring on some questions. So we had some people tweeting uh, Kirk's comment earlier about how you know this is so disruptive, you really can't hi find the people to hire. Um, you guys obviously NetApp is a legacy in this term, legacy vendor, Silicon Valley success story, venture back, skyrocket, you know, and survive the the, the trough of the bubble and right. rebound and do great financial performance. Um, but storage is changing with the SSDs, flash. We know you guys are doing a lot of stuff there, and Dave Dave covers like a blanket. Um, how has Hadoop disrupted you? You know, we've heard rumors you've lost some business, uh, there's demand in the marketplace, um, because the market shifts. So what, what can you share with us, not about losing business, but like with the new solutions that are coming out, you obviously have to look at that by not having a Hadoop presence. You know, you guys sell gear and you know, you're impacted by the disruption. So could you put some color around that? Well, the the market. You can take the gloves off now. Too. Yeah, okay. you know. <laughs> the market. We're is, easy. We yeah. get bike back. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, these guys aren't shrinking violets. In case you haven't figured yeah, that out. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so, the market is. I mean, I'm not saying that that's doing bad, and you guys are performing tons. No, we're still great. You know. Come on. Look, no, I just want to know some use it. cases of where okay. the disruption is, and where, you know, obviously you're doing this to serve demand. Number one, we're there, and we're we're still growing. You've we're, been there. We, yeah. We've been there. You've been there. <laughs> yeah. This show, all we're doing is bringing a new set of tools that expands that market opportunity. Um, Ingenio, the Ingenio acquisition provided us a whole bunch of, uh, of new opportunity there, where we had we had a, a great chunk of the market already uh, covered, and there was a piece that you, frankly, you need you need this uh, this high ingest, um, high capacity, high density. Um, solution for, and that's where the Ingenio fits in into the big data space. And we're going into several markets around that that we've been talking about, but this is this being one of them. So this is our, our move. What we're talking about today yeah, yeah, yeah. is is the move to cover that. I would even to add to that. I mean, you think about what NetApp has done over the last you know 15 plus years. They're a very significant uh, partner with Oracle. They do a lot of kind of st structured relational database analytics. And imagine if. Assuming 10 or 20 percent of the analytics are coming out of NetApp storage anyway, what if you could then go back in and tap the other 80 percent, and you could put a system like Hadoop with Cloudera Enterprise on top of that to generate more insight out of a broader set of data? The data is sitting there already. NetApp's right. been managing it and so keeping the, it secure so the, for years. You can only reach maybe 10 percent of it sometimes to, to actually yeah. do any analysis on it. It's a powerful concept. I mean, we can't stop thinking about like the future because you look at what what uh, the hundred million dollar fund and all these new analytic tools, right. uh, and the growth of Facebook and these these new and, and even in the financial services, analytics is obviously a key part of that business, the edge of the the app edge, if you want to call it, or the edge of the network. But it really talks to a cloud model. I mean, spinning up clusters, I mean, it's going to probably be push button kind of like analytics. Right. So, you know, you guys sell in hardware into you know, enterprises. Big discussion around cloud. How do you see that cloud piece expanding if people start you know, building applications on a Heroku, for example, or these new clouds? The gear shifts. So you guys sell gear, so it just shifts zero sum gain. It goes. I mean, someone's still got to buy storage, right? Your storage isn't going away. So, so what's your view on that? Well, to my my view is the, the data has to live somewhere, and it's going to live where it's most efficient, and where it can be managed the easiest. So what what we're focused on is what we've been focused on is data flexibility and data efficiency, and and this is just another instance. In fact, the more we talked about this, the, the more it came back to, this is just what we do. 
All right, so that's a question I asked uh, uh, yeah. uh, Kirk, which is, every company's got that one thing that they do really well in their DNA that's kind of in their culture. What is that for NetApp? I mean, it's, you know, sometimes it's shipping code, it's high quality, uh, design, if you're Steve Jobs, or what's NetApp's one thing that they do extremely well? So, so at the heart of NetApp is innovation, but where you see the innovation is in efficiency, and, and making data centers more efficient, making data centers easy to, easier to manage, being able to deploy. I mean, one of the things we've got right now with Hadoop is deploying, de deploying the infrastructure is we want to shrink the time that it takes to do that so you can get on with the, the work of the uh, data analysis. So it's, okay. those, are the, those are the main areas. Okay, we're watch, you're watching SiliconAngle.tv's coverage uh, with Wikibon.org, SiliconAngle.com, The Cube, flagship telecast, we go out to the event. Uh, Kirk Dunn, the COO of Cloudera, extending their lead in Hadoop, looking in the rear view mirror as their competitive strategy uh, to compete, just keep on plowing ahead and extending the lead. And uh, Jeff O'Neill from NetApp announcing the announcement. Thanks for coming on The Cube, guys, appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having us, guys, appreciate it.